Good morning and welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I am Sue and we are here in Growing Zone 6B in New England. Today is the day, y'all. Today is the day I'm gonna rip out these tomatoes. Tomato season is officially over here by us. Let me show you what's going on. So we got blight and then we got rid of blight and now we've got blight again and then it stopped raining for like a minute and stuff is growing back but it's not doing well and uh it's so depressing and you know i've been putting this off i've been <laughs> this is week three um this is the end of my third week of putting this off. It's just, you know, I'll go outside and I'll be like, oh no, it looks better. And then I realize these poor tomatoes have almost nothing left to photosynthesize with because as the leaves have been going bad, I've been pulling them off and dude, so it's the day. I'm going to do it today. I have some lovely brassica starts from the farm store that I'm going to put in. Um, and, oh, so there's still a bunch of green tomatoes. I'm gonna bring in all the green tomatoes. Lib said something, this is so interesting. He's been doing some brewing and some fermentation stuff. He and I totally missed our fermentation arc at the beginning of quarantine and there may be sourdough. I don't know, we're, we're playing with yeast and all kinds of stuff right now. So he had mentioned a green tomato wine, which sounds repulsive in theory, but I've cooked a lot of things that I was like, oh, I don't know about this. And then they turned out to be great. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna pull the plants out wholesale. Any tomatoes that are blushing will go into the pile with the others in the windowsill and anything that's green, I'll save them for lib. Um, Never fear, there are a handful of tomato plants and they're mostly the volunteers, which I find hilarious, um, that are still doing okay. So we will have some tomatoes coming in, just none of the ones that I planted. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm gonna save Lib the green tomatoes. I will put the blushers in the windowsill with the others and here we go. Let's get these out of here. Those are the plants that came out of the yard. A uh, couple of things, because it was blighted, that cannot go into the compost, that's gonna get thrown away or it's gonna go over to the burn pile. It'll probably wind up on the burn pile. Anyway, this, the blight was caused by a fungus, so we don't want that anywhere near our compost. We also, next year, are gonna have to find a new spot to plant the tomatoes because that blight, that fungus, it sticks around for a while. I probably won't do any nightshades on this section next year when I put the new garden in. Um, just let's give it a year or two away from that blight and then we can do nightshades in here. But the other side of the garden's wide open for nightshades. So we'll do the tomatoes over there next year. Okay, the job is done. Not that backbreaking, a little bit heartbreaking, hurts my feelings. Um, on the other hand, there are still like six tomato plants in there. I've got two volunteers over by the peanut bucket. I've got a volunteer in the beans. Um, I've got a couple of volunteers over by the okra by the side of the garage. So I'm not hurting for tomatoes. <laughs> I've got two and a half gallons defrosting in the fridge, another two and a half gallons in the freezer, and at least two and a half gallons on my windowsill. So I am not hurting for tomatoes. We will definitely have tomatoes into the winter season and maybe, maybe even into spring. We did okay this year. Um, the next thing is to get these brassica starts in here. 
I gotta tell you, I'm not, I'm not real optimistic. I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful, but I'm not real optimistic about these brassicas. Um, so, well, you know what, let me take that back. There's bok choy in there that I am 100% certain we will use. Cause you can use bok choy even when it's itty bitty. So if it gets this big, great, we can still eat it. Uh, the cabbages, don't know. This was a last ditch effort at covering up where the tomatoes were. Um, but I don't know how long they take to head up. I feel like regardless of whether or not they head up, at least the chickens will have something yummy to eat, you know? So I'm counting on that. I've got stuff to do today. I'm gonna try and get these brassica starts in tomorrow morning, first thing when it's still nice and cool out here. So I'll bring them out when, ooh, less bugs. So I'll bring the brassica starts out with me in the morning when I tend to the burbs. But for now, I've got to take care of the other stuff. So I'll catch you up in a little bit. Dear Diary, it's been two days since I pulled the tomato plants. I am currently in the garden surrounded by tiny bugs. But I'm gonna put them in today. I'm gonna put them in today. I've got some bok choy. I've got some amazing cauliflower and some cheddar cauliflower. And then red cabbage and some broccoli. It's called gypsy broccoli. Um, so all of this stuff has been sitting on the porch, has been sitting on the porch for like three weeks. And I feel like a dick. Um, and, and I shouldn't have let it sit for three weeks. I, I should, I'm just gonna put it in the ground now. Yeah. I was just really, I was just really sad about the tomatoes <laughs> for a really long time. So I'm gonna spread these out and then get them in the ground. Here we go. Sound returning, getting louder. Brassicas for days. Now that the tomatoes are out, I can really see these tomatillos. And how interesting that they've all kind of laid down. You can really see it from this angle, how it's sort of laid down. This is back to the way that everything started to follow the light. For example, these marigolds started out all over there on the left, and they just sort of grew into this magnificent hedge over here. Sunflower. All right, let's see, let's see. So over here we have the zucchini, this plant and the one next to it. And they're still doing pretty good in spite of a little bit of powdery mildew going on. I don't know what's going to happen with the winter squash as we get into the season. But hey, check it out. That's a butternut squash ripening up. And then there's this guy and I'm not sure what it is, but I'm really hoping it's an acorn squash because I planted those just for Bill. And there's another butternut. 
Oh, Turkish orange eggplant, and these are ready to pick. Look at these things, they're so freaking cute. One mighty okra volunteer. And she bore fruit. Oh, sweet potatoes. Oh, sweet potatoes. So let's check in with this peanut bucket and see what's going on. Um, we, it looks like that zucchini is just about done. It put off a whole bunch, it put off a whole bunch of fruit that went ahead and just rotted. I think we got one more big zucchini out of that, um, but there were like five that butted up. And I'm gonna pull this guy out probably in the next few days. Meanwhile, the tomatoes, the volunteer tomatoes are coming in like gangbusters. And you'll notice there's very, and you'll notice there's very little blight on this guy. Hello, volunteers. Um, so there are at least three kinds of tomatoes going on here. There's, I don't know if you can see, there's these ones on this side, which look like they're chocolate cherries. There are these ones. There are these ones, um, which I have no idea what they are, but they are, they are delicious. And then yellow pears up in here. And how cool is that? Because those were Bill's favorites last year. And the rest of the, the bucket, the peanuts appear to be doing well. So we're gonna leave them a little bit longer and then pull them up at the end of the season. And speaking of peanuts, check out this guy. This little peanut just warms my heart. Bill has been feeding the squirrels peanuts and they come when he calls sometimes, which is adorable. Sometimes they just plant the peanuts instead of eating them and, um, hey. <laughs> This is another volunteer that has stolen my heart. Look at her. Um, it's a delicata. And we've got a couple of fruits. And we have a couple of fruits hanging. One here. And then another one up there. And we need to talk about this Chinese wool flower. Because, oh my goodness, she's gorgeous. I have to tell you about this wool flower because it's ridiculous. Chinese wool flower was on the cover of this year's Baker Creek seed catalog and I was immediately swept away. So I ordered some seeds and I planted out like a tray of them and nothing happened. Keep in mind, this is my first year in the greenhouse, so it was probably user error, not Baker Creek. Anyway, nothing came up and I dumped all the dirt into a tub and I wound up using that tub for some basil and dill and some volunteer tomatoes, of course. Um, and this weed started coming up and I was like, oh, it's kind of a pretty weed. I wonder what it is. <laughs> I'm really glad I didn't pull it up because it's Chinese wool flower, um, which, uh, the seeds from the original mix, they must have just taken their time. I'm, I'm watching over that little, that little darling very closely. <laughs> little pocket harvest of okra for today. Um, this one came off that cute little volunteer over by the cucumbers that I'm going to pull down. And then a whole bunch of this Turkish orange eggplant. Bunch of nice fat tomatillos. Gonna make some more salsa verde out of that. Um, and some of these tomatoes. I don't know what these are. They might be, um, they might be the sunrise bumblebees, um, but they also could be the lucky tiger stripe cherries. And they're beautiful. Look at that. And these have been incredibly prolific. I, 
I fully admit I've made that TikTok pasta um, with the cherries out of our garden probably four times since the beginning of the season. So I have nothing to complain about about those tomatoes. They've done right by us. Got a full day in front of me. Um, Mom and Aunt Sarah are coming over in a little bit. I've got cucumbers sitting in my sink ready to pickle. Got them at uh, Breezy Gardens. I did not get those out of my garden. If you're ever in Leicester, check them out. They have a great farm stand. Um, so I'm gonna get on that cucumber business. I got a whole bunch of garlic to peel for it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I will catch you up soon. Take care. Okay. We done. <laughs> it's done. It's done. Oh my gosh. <laughs>